ready for us? All right. Are we ready for us? All right. Guy returns from work. He stops at the fridge to grab a beer. He turns around to see Leah. Holy spit. Who the F are you? This is how you want to play it. <laughs> oh, Guy. Play what? It's been three days. What has? Since I poked you. Well, I think I would know if I was poked. Wait, on Facebook? Uh, on Facebook? You sound so stupid. Like an effing stupid baby Martian with little stupid baby Martian diapers and a friggin' stupid baby Martian rattle. Is this your first day on Earth? You know, I, I never understood the Facebook poke. I mean, what does it mean? Maybe if you had poked me back. What? What would have happened if I had poked you back? Then one of us wouldn't need an antidote. Why would you need an antidote? Oh. Oh, such a wasted poke. Stupid baby Martian. Guy gets out his phone. Okay, I'll, I'll poke you back now. Mm, no, if only it were that easy. Leah kicks the phone out of his hand. Damn, if, if I had known you could do that, I would have... Poked me back? Oh, holy crap. I can't see. <laughs> yeah, that's the poison. <laughs> I, I, I just never understood poking. Is, is, it, is it a flirty thing? A, a friendly thing? Yeah. A sexual thing? A oh. sexual, friendly, flirty thing? It, it just never made sense. I had an ant poke me once. I just poked you again, guy. You can poke me back in Can you believe it? We're back. Fire Yay! Fiesta Ooh! episode Ooh! Uh, Earwig Graffiti. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being here. Let's give a quick shout out to our core cast, Mr. Rob Hutspeth. Hello. Nicole Hodges. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I Hello. am Richard Houghton, and this is Yay. our special guest star, Jessica Willis. All right, let's do this thing. Or not. <laughs> not so hard. There. Universal, Universal Hobo! Universal Hobo! Hi, Mom! Hi, Mom! Hi, Brad. I'm so glad you could take time out of your busiest schedule piddling away your college tuition to visit your mother's. Be nice, April. Well, he is, May. Oh, who is this? Hey, this is Pat, the homeless fellow I have been teaching to read. Hee <laughs> hee! God bless you, Brad! What were you saying? What were your beautiful, confident mother saying? Equality? <laughs> uh, welcome to our home. May I hang up your denim army jacket? Universal, Universal hobo. hobo! You just dinged a very expensive car. It's just a scratch. A scratch? I'm Snapchatting this bitch. This is going to cost you. My husband is a paralegal. Universal, Universal hobo. hobo! I hate to bother you like this, but I haven't eaten in a couple of days. May I ride with you to your house and wash the windows? Oh, oh, where are you going? Don't you want my insurance information? No? Uh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> Universal, Universal Hobo! hobo. You just had a great meal, but you don't have quite enough money to pay for it. Universal, Universal Hobo! Uh, will there be anything else? Are you gonna finish that roll? I'll trade you a peanut! Yeah, I'm deathly allergic to those. How did that get in here? Those were not on the menu. <laughs> oh, I am terribly sorry, sir. The food is on the house. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um, throw in a quick hand job. <laughs> right away, sir. Left or right. <laughs> Surprise me. Universal <laughs> Hobo! Thanks, Pat! A.M. Garland. Garland. I guess good mornings are in order. I guess. Good morning, Miguel. Good morning, Letty Lee. As good as it can be on 20 minutes of sleep. I can't afford a brand name mattress like the beach with a big contract, so I sleep on pizza boxes. What Miguel meant to say was welcome to A.M. Garland. Was that an imitation of my voice? Yes, it was spot on. Your voice makes dog vomit. Well, speaking of spot on, do you think white pants were a good choice for you this time of the month? I effing hate you. Right back at you. Introduce our next guest, A-Hole. Our first guest, D-Munch, is here to talk about Labor Day boat safety. 
or F. Nobody gives a spit about that. Please welcome Liesl Vantini with the Garland Boat Council. Liesl enters. Oh, good morning, Lefty Lee. I am not saying good morning to Miguel. He knows what he did. Thank you for being here, Liesl. Is it true that the Labor Day is one of the deadliest holidays from a boat safety perspective? I don't know. Was that what I was supposed to be talking about? Yes. Oh, you set me up, C-word. How about you not post selfies of you and Kurt in his condo? Chef Todd enters. Chef Todd, you're early for your flan or custard segment. F you, Miguel. You know, people love freaking custard, and flan is like something you would squeeze out of a boil. I'm not making either one. Then why are you here? I want to know why Liesl is posting selfies with Kurt, too. Todd, I told you it was over. Over? Or a fresh opportunity for a threesome? We'll be right back. Watching, Watching the, the perfume, perfume commercial. commercial. Um, uh, why is she on that yacht? <laughs> I don't know, Doug. Is that, is that a matador? It's a gaucho. They have different hats. Oh, well, they seem attracted to one another. Well, gauchos are hot. Mm, looks like a rose petal fire hose. Wrapped in a vagina? Well, if it looks like a rose petal fire hose and sounds like a rose petal fire hose wrapped in a vagina. Wait, wait. Now it's after the apocalypse and she's with a bunch of rip dancing waiters. And I guess they live behind that ice sculpture. Mm, the satyr sure loves his champagne. Most do. Wait, no. They're, they're back on the yacht. Yes, but this time there are strobe lights. <laughs> Maybe I'm not following this because I missed the last episode. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. It's a perfume commercial. <gasps> Practical, Practical Kung, Kung Fu proposal. proposal. Bud eats corn on the cob one kernel at a time. Lewis paces the floor on his board on the boarding house. Lewis seems anxious. Lewis, you seem anxious. Nicole totally just said that. What's the problem, buddy boy? I think I'm going to finally do it. Oh, get rid of that booger that's been hanging out of your nose since Friends was on? No. Please do that. It's starting to look like a tusk. I'm going to ask former Detective Mockingbird to marry me. Now, that's kind of a big step, Lewis. Yeah, especially for someone like me with very stumpy legs. How are you going to propose? That's what I'm struggling with. That and an earwig that's doing earwig graffiti on my cerebral cortex. Kung Fu, Lewis! Kung Fu, bud! Would it help to practice your proposal on K? Uh, would that also include practicing consummating the marriage? Depends on how high K is. Later that evening, Lewis kneels in front of Kay. Howdy, Kay. Okay, only start your proposal with howdy if you're proposing to a scarecrow. Uh, show me how you would propose to me. Well, I'd get down on one knee, take her hand, stare deeply into her eyes, and say... Uh, let's get hitched, toots. I only want weekly to monthly sex <laughs> with one person for the rest of my life. Later that night... Lewis, you're acting strange, even for you. I have something I want to ask you, but I don't know what to do. It's been my experience that blackmail always helps. Solid coaching, former Detective Mockingbird. My name is Gretel. Really? Do you live in a gingerbread house? Sorry, Gretel. My name's really Linda. Linda, we have known each other for a while, and you are my number one spankspiration. Because of you, my lube budget has tripled. Get to the point, Stubby. Remember... Blackmail. Right, Gretel. I have some very incriminating photographs of you and John Stamos. Oh, my. Call him Uncle Jesse. That I can keep from falling into the wrong hands if... As Lewis gets the ring out of his pocket, Linda gets the taser out of her purse. That will teach you to blackmail me. Ooh, a ring. I can hawk that spit for at least 30 bucks. Somebody is buying scratches tonight! U.S. US Motors, Motors Warthog. 
I need a vehicle that draws attention away from the warped Google Maps that are my spider veins. Safety should be a top concern of mine since I'm not much more than a Lyft driver for my kids. But I'm more concerned about streaming Housewives where I can watch it. I want a car that a chick will feel comfortable riding in but won't expect me to, like, pay for her dinner. I want a car that my parents will begrudgingly pass down to me that will camouflage the weed smell as I get pulled over. A car that will make a chick want to put out before I put her out. A car that I could put 50 cats in and drive them around until they all hurled. A car that vibrates in all the right places. Mm, a car that vibrates in all the right places. A car that will vanquish my enemies. A car I can wipe my butt on. A car that will repair my hymen. A car that will get it up for me. A car that will make me an omelet. A car that will satisfy me like no man or woman ever has. A car that makes sacrifices. Human sacrifices. A car that makes my vagina feel like heaven. The Warthog from U.S. Motors. We don't know if it does all of those things. Some of them are pretty reckless. But it has four wheels, a roof, and doors that open and close reliably. And, and now, now, Prison, Prison Saloon. Saloon. Vivian's pacing shocks Lucy awake. Don't! I'm HIV positive! Oh, oh, God. It's just you. Well, what's the matter? I, I, I did a terrible thing, Lucy. Well, no spit. We're in prison. No, I, I, I recently did a new terrible thing. No, no, it's fine. I'll help you dissolve the body. Oh, oh, th there's no body. Then it can't be that terrible. Oh, God. I invited Warden Mooney for dinner. No biggie. And I told him you would cook the dinner and serve it to him. You Emma Effa, you know I'll murder the spit out of Warden Moody in the first chance I get. Oh, please, please, Lucy. It'll knock seven to ten years off of my sentence. You... Okay, kid. Okay. That I'll do it. That night. Knock, knock. Come on in, Warden Mooney. I'll use my keys. You know I've been fond of you since I first hosed you down oh. with lice poison. Lucy enters, carrying a big pot of something... Ah, Lucy, I love that you will be serving me like the low-class, stinking creature that you are. May I pour your soup, Warden? Of course, but will you please serve it, crawling on your knees like the subservient dog you are? Ah! Lucy. Lucy scalds Warden Mooney to death. Oh, my skin! It's peeling off like a glove! He dies. Well, Warden Mooney was a gaping male C-word. Uh, screw parole, Lucy. Screw parole, Viv. <laughs> We're gonna have the best time in hell. You know it, kid! And, and now, now, Undercover, undercover Spitty Boss. boss. CEO Lena Newcomb enters the conference room where Jack Crenshaw is sitting. Recognize me? Uh, you kind of look like Louise, the person I was training to work in our call center. Don't be so stupid. I'm Lana Newcomb, CEO of Albright Enterprises. What do you have to say to that? I'm speechless. Yet, you said something. Oh. I want to say, I was impressed by how much you care about our customers. Thank you! Don't interrupt. I want to say that, but encouragement ain't really my thing. I'm docking you a day's pay. Go back to work. Lana sits across from Stephanie. Tell me about your brother again. Oh, well, he and I were very close. Our parents worked graveyard shift. In the middle of the night? Oh, no, no. They, they were hunchbacks who worked for a doctor with some crazy ideas. Continue. Well, you know, so I pretty much raised him myself. Yeah, I don't care about that part. Oh, uh, well, well uh, one morning he was out and he was chased by a pack of wild dogs or, or werewolves. Hold on. Lana gets her bag of popcorn. Keep going. They tore him apart. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. What? No, 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 don't be sorry. Finish your story, bitch! Lana sits across from Trevor, her head of social media. I really liked your idea of commercializing Easter by creating a new Easter Twitter superhero. Well, thank you! And now, I'm going to steal your idea, take full credit for it. W wait, 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 what? Lana chokes Trevor with his own necktie. Oh, spit, were you shooting that? 
Roy, Roy and, and Kitty. Kitty. Eden and Alan show up at Creel's house. Kitty is about 15 years younger than Roy. Eden carries a tofu-filled casserole. Eden is just about to ring the doorbell. Uh, is it too late to fake a seizure? Nope. Too early. The bastard's going to pick me up and spin me around. The bitch is going to serve me tang. Who the F even has tang? Roy swings the door open. Kitty is conspicuously buttoning her shirt. Roy is conspicuously zipping his fly. <laughs> oh, are our guests here? <laughs> hey, go away! I gave it the office. <laughs> Roy shuts the door. Sweet! Eden and Alan start to run away. Roy opens the door again. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Roy picks Alan up and spins him around. Hey, little lady. Eden dodges Roy's lip kiss as Kitty hugs Alan. No, oh, I just love it when he calls me that. Yeah, not as much as I love being picked up and spun around by another dude. You'd like it if a woman did it. Uh, it depends on the woman. Oh, no, no whispering in the Creel house. I believe that. These bastards are so loud. I have a couple of tanginis with your names on them. Great. I have a floorboard full of puke with your name on it. <laughs> it's not the grape tang again, is it? Oh, no. That kind is too hard to find. Kitty has a tray of tangtinis in brightly colored tea glasses. Tangtinis are martinis made with tang. Who would think of that? <laughs> it's one of Kitty's uh, many talents. <laughs> Roy grabs Kitty. Man, that's just gross. Mm. Well, you know, Roy was just about to fire up the grill. Yeah, speaking of fire. Roy kisses Kitty. Mm -hmm. I can see their tongues from here. You know, I bet there's poison around here somewhere. We could take the easy way out. Mm -hmm. hey, I've got four of the thickest steaks this side of Buenos Aires. Did uh, Steaks? I hope they're tofu steaks. <laughs> what? There's no such thing. <laughs> I mean, steaks are meat. Uh, we're, we're vegetarians. vegetarians. Kitty drops her tray of tangitis and runs back to the bedroom crying. Roy and Kitty's patio. Roy eats a steak while Eden and Alan eat crackers. <laughs> Sorry, that's the only thing we have without meat. Alan starts to fake a seizure. Eden shakes her head. Saltines! Starchy! Fake, fake commercial! Cloudy toilet tissue! I don't want to worry about how messy my poop is. I want to make sure not much of it gets on my fingers because I hate washing my hands. <sighs> my husband has some serious hygiene issues. I want a toilet paper that doesn't make me want to cut his hands off in his sleep. We, we like, like to, to make crafts, crafts with used toilet, toilet paper. paper. And what if that spit came in flavors? I could taste it, then wipe myself. I don't know. Whatever order I want to do that in. Oh, my husband needs some professional help. I want a toilet paper strong enough to choke the life out of a man without leaving a mark. Hail, Hail toilet, toilet paper! Hail, Hail toilet, toilet paper! We will follow you! I also eat toilet paper to control my weight, so if you could do something about that too? Mainly just sop up my crap without clogging my plumbing! I'd respect the TP that could do that! Maybe even vote for it! My husband is dumb enough to vote for a toilet paper. I want a toilet paper that I can write I want a divorce on. Our parents' divorce is the toilet paper's fault. Cloudy toilet tissue. It's complicated. Snuggle Town Deli. Cheese. Eleanor the rat failed to deliver cheese to the Snuggletown Deli. The Snuggletown Four decided to find a cheese tree to harvest their own cheese. Kenny, the fish who can live on land. Snuggletown Deli is out of cheese, and our cheese vendor is having his genitals electrocuted in a North Korean prison. In inconsiderate little spit he is. Epi, the honeybee? What are we going to do about cheese for the deli? What is he going to do about genitals for lots of stuff? Guys, why not pick fresh cheese from the cheese tree? What? Why didn't I think of that, Rita the Swallow? Uh, honeybees are dumber than birds. Oh, true that. Could somebody bring me some water? 
got pollen and ragweed in the old gears. Hey, hey, hey. I'll lead the way to the cheese tree. <laughs> Crap, you startled the spit out of me, Hoppy. You'll lead the way to some what? Hoppy the grasshopper? To the cheese tree. Oh, <laughs> F. I don't think that either three of you appreciate how perilous my situation oh, is. follow me. It's just across the meadow. <laughs> no doy. I see it, Hoppy. Uh, how are we going to get the cheese down? Uh, I, I could catapult Kenny up to you, Rita. Oh, oh, and then I can fly as high as I can go and then drop Tinny down on a chunk of cheese to knock it off. Oh, that, that's a terrible idea. Here we go. No, I, I caught him. I hate you, Ash. Fly as high as you can and then drop him. Bombs away. Oh, well, that didn't work. Yeah, uh, can he kind of squished into the cheese? Oh, well, I guess we'll do without cheese. <laughs> We're lactose intolerant anyway. Guys. <laughs> 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 it's nothing. Mitch and Sherry are fast asleep. Mitch was horny, but Sherry took too long in the bathroom. Silly Sherry. That's not that important to the sketch, actually. I just wanted to talk more. I mean, nobody ever lets me talk. Mitch is started awake. Uh, whoa, hey, what? Uh, did you hear something? Other than my mother effing hubby cakes waking me up. Hubby cakes? Where the F did you get that? Housewives, you're not waking me up to waste 30 seconds of my life with that weird spit you call sex, are you? Well, there it is again. Uh, y y you go find out what it is. That is not my job. That is your job. I'm on break. Marco enters the room, followed closely by Shauna. What? Is this the underground supper club? How did you get in here? Uh, your locks are spitty. Is this the underground supper club? I brought a pineapple dish. But you're not carrying anything. I'm wearing it under my shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the uh, underground supper club. Can I see your pineapple dish? Oh, <laughs> Sure. Shauna starts to take off her shirt. Hey, wait a minute. How do we know you're not lying? He's totally lying. This is our bedroom. We don't even know what an underground supper club is. I, I can't believe this is happening again. <laughs> we don't know what one is either. We've been going door to door. Underground supper clubs. Confusing hipsters for over two years. Uncle, Uncle Vic. Vic. Future. Future. Uncle Vic furiously scratches a lottery ticket. Emmer Effer. What's the matter, Uncle Vic? Well, I needed another friggin' rooster, Katie. Nobody ever wins any money on those, Uncle Vic. I have a system. Uncle Vic furiously scratches another lottery oh, ticket. Mother Effer. Your system blows, Uncle Vic. Well, I guess I'll have to come up with the plan B. I've used plan B before. What? Nothing. A plan B for what? My future. Scratchers were your plan A? Well, more like plan A and a half. Plan A was being a gigolo. You in? You got any cash? Ow! Sorry, Katie. Did you ever think about your future? Sure I do, Uncle Vec. Yeah, where do you see yourself in five years? I think I'll own my own company. Oh, nice. I'm going to be married. Oh, yeah? Same sex? I'm still experimenting. Nice. Any kids? I'm not sure I'll be ready for kids. Hey, I can watch them. No kids. But we'll have our own place. You and him or her. Right. I'm leaning more towards the him? Well, you know, I have been a pretty strong role model. You know, or the her. Mm, keep going. Your own place with or without silverfish. Without. Well, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Anything else? What, what are you getting at, Uncle Vec? Um, is there a place for me? Aw, Uncle Vec. You know, even though I want to remind you that we are in no way related and I have no obligation to you whatsoever, yeah, right. there's always a place for you. Oh, thank you, Katie. On the floor of the garage. Uh, you know, I'll take it. Here. What's that? My last scratcher. Aw, thanks, Uncle Vec. I'll save it for later. 
Yeah, I do that with tuna sandwiches. Where do you see yourself in five years? The Oval Office. Hmm. You know, it could happen. Or a gigolo farm. Mm -hmm. And that will do it for us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that oh, was episode Indeed. 16. 16. Face thing. Christine, 16. That is right. Uh, let's give <laughs> our amazing cast a chance to plug anything they're currently working on. Go, Rob. Yes. Thank you, Richard. Uh, we are actually going to be hosting. That's right. Monday night's Very Scary Merry Christmas, mm -hmm. 48 hour film festival showing. This will be the uh, screening of all the, the, the entrants for the festival. So, uh, Richard will be s saying funny jokes and <laughs> kicking me in the nuts, I believe, for the entire uh, five hours that it'll last. Let's, so let's, it's it's five no no five dollars to get in. I'm sorry, I let's don't mean not to give it all away, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you Can know, we, I just want people to have something to look forward to. Uh, so well, there will be that. Certainly, you being kicked in the nuts is that Nicole? Yes. Uh, one of my VO spots just came out for a health and wellness company. So if you're hearing health and wealth, and it sounds like it's coming yeah. from me, it probably well, is on the good old radio. With uh, Rev Up Productions, I'm also hosting um, auditions. It's either going to be next week or the week after for a film I'm producing called Ghost Light, and I'm in conjunction with Road Rage Productions with you Josh Briscoe and Matt Harris. Middle-aged old dudes. Always, awesome. actually, I just want that for me personally, not just for <laughs> everything professional. Yes. <laughs> so you know that's how I roll. It's him or hers, you know, it's just we're sticking to the script. Um, I could do both that. Yeah. So all my wonderful fellow talented actors out there, please be on the lookout for those auditions because we're going to shoot in late January, early February. Cool. And as Rob said, uh, we are hosting the very, very, it rhymes with airy Christmas. <laughs> 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 Four eight-hour film race and Kitten Rose Ramirez is hosting with us. Yes, she yeah. is. So I'm sure people will be paying much more attention to her than to us. Of so course. the pressure's off. <laughs> <laughs> and our very special guest star, Jessica Willis. Yay! Yay! Just Any, yes. Anything you want to plug? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. All right. I have some <laughs> terrible horror films you can check out on Netflix. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There's Blood Reunion, one of them. Yeah, but, oh, I, I, I wasn't in that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Rob. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> hey, I was in one of those, so I'll know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, and thank you to our awesome listeners, and thank you to our man Littles. Littles. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye.